Hey, how you doing? I'll take one black coffee. How black do you want it? What? Black is my soul. Sure. Here you go. Hey, what are you doing? Suiting up for the big reveal. I'm the villain. I poisoned that coffee. Why? Because I hate light and goodness. And I hate you. But, but why? Why do you hate good things? Didn't you hear me? Because I'm the villain! Yeah, don't let me catch you writing a character like that. Why? Because I'm the... Hey, writing gang. Welcome back. Today, I dare you to write a character who directly impedes your main character without being a jerk. We're back in business, writing tip style. Those of you who watched my last video saw and heard some pretty dramatic stuff, so thank you for being there. And now we're going to get back into gear with some writing tips. We're going to talk about vil uh, antagonists. We're going to avoid the word villain for the purpose of this video because the word has a stigma that I'm trying very hard to help you overcome. Villain is almost synonymous with evil. Not only that, but predictable. These characters are virtually unlikable and they're really unrelatable which, if you've seen my other writing help videos, you know that that's not a good thing for your characters, even the antagonists. In a good story that's told well, even characters with little to no redeeming qualities can be interesting. They can give you insight into the mind of someone who's deranged. They're not just evil, they're a little twisted. Evil is boring, and boring is the death of a story. So let's strap on our red devil horns, Let's compose a sympathetic backstory and come up with an antagonist together. Grab a pen and paper, folks. You're going to be doing some interactive activities with me. I'm going to come up with examples and activities to help you craft an antagonist that's a little bit more relatable and more of a complex character. And I bet you a poisoned cup of coffee you're going to have fun doing it too. This video is part of my interactive series where I help you with activities to build one aspect of a story at a time. I've already done videos on protagonists and conflict, so if you've seen those videos and you've already started a draft, grab what you worked on and use it to help you with this. If not, that's fine. You can start here too. Because all parts of a story should work together and support each other. I dare you to watch all of my videos and come up with an amazing story. The first question to ask is what is an antagonist anyway? A quick Google search will tell you an antagonist is a person who opposes or is hostile towards someone or something, or an adversary. Note the lack of morally charged words here. Anyone might oppose someone or something for any particular reason. It doesn't make you evil. For instance, I oppose fossil fuels as our global source of energy. That doesn't make me evil, but it does make me an antagonist to the cause. Maybe someone whose family relied on fossil fuel income to make a living would see me as a villain. And this is exactly how you should handle writing a protagonist and antagonist in a story. Different people from different perspectives can come off completely different. Give readers a taste of that sweet, sweet, bigger picture. Show them different ideologies and methods. Don't just glop it all together in one big, evil, disgusting pot pie. Use your antagonist to flesh out different perspectives or even play on greater forces like fate. So is your antagonist evil? No, they just oppose your protagonist. The biggest part of making a good one is finding out why. This brings us to activity one. You're going to pick a goal for your antagonist. People who have seen my other videos will recognize this step. If you have, you've already picked a goal for your protagonist. That's right, your antagonist should also have a goal. Something outside, stop the protagonist. The purpose of picking this goal is to put some kind of driving force, some greater motivation behind your antagonist. Give them a reason to do what they do. There's no character more unlikable or unrelatable than the evil emperor who slaughters his own people like he's making them into peasant popcorn bites. What's that? Did I say relatable? That's right, folks. The best antagonists are someone that readers can identify with at least a little bit. A conflict between two believable characters is ultimately more entertaining than anything that can happen between a hero and villain. I might as well tell you who to root for, who wins, and you know what, don't even bother reading it. So take into consideration your setting, your conflict, and your protagonist's goal if you've worked on any of that stuff from other videos. These are all things that will help you figure out what your antagonist's goal should be to pit them against your protagonist organically. If not, that's okay. Start here. What does your antagonist want? Think ideas, not deeds. Any horrendous atrocities committed will be in the name of this goal you pick for your antagonist. 
you have to remember, it should seem justified in their eyes. Grab your paper and pen and jot down of what your antagonist's goal is going to be. I'm gonna do the same, and I'm gonna try and come up with the worst possible example for you, so you know what not to do. Then I'll give you a better one. My antagonist, for the purposes of these activities, will be His Excellency Lord Dingdongus. And Lord Dingdongus wants to eradicate magic. Now, this is a terrible goal. Why is that? Because it doesn't reveal anything about his character. It doesn't seem based in any kind of value. He just wants to eradicate something. Much like genocides in our own world. They're completely unjustified, and it really just makes that leader come off as a huge jerk, because they are. Here's a better example. Lord Dingdongus wants to secure the safety of his kingdom and the surrounding territories from the threat of magic-based violence. You can see how this motivation would lead Lord Dingdongus to do some things that might be questionable in the interest of protecting his people. Maybe he would impose some restrictive laws on magical territories to reduce that violence. Maybe eventually this would lead to the desire to eradicate magic if rebellion stirs but this is only because he wants to protect his citizens from the dangers of magic. It's much more relatable and realistic. It not only fleshes him out as a character, but gives a different perspective to a world where magic exists. Activity two, create a personal connection for your antagonist. Keyword here is personal. We're gonna give your jerk uh, antagonist a buddy. The more of a foil this person is for your antagonist character, the better. This shows complexity and raises a couple questions around a character who may once have been viewed as the big baddie. Wait, you mean this person has connections? Like the main character? Like anybody? Maybe we're all the antagonists in someone else's story at one point or another, and we don't even... It doesn't have to be a friend either. Your antagonist's personal connection could be a spouse, a child, a parent, or even a pet. Bear in mind, some of these have been used more often than others. The key thing is that this person should be from outside the antagonist's league of evil, underlings or cohorts. These people should be connected to the antagonist outside of military, political, or other types of alliances that relate to the conflict. Anyone can surround themselves with a crowd of like-minded folks. It's not too hard. But it takes a really complex person to maintain a connection with someone who's very different from them. So grab your notebook and come up with one personal connection for your antagonist. Here's Lord Dingdongus's personal connection. Meet Anti-Magic Mike. This is Lord Dingdongus's trusted general. His parents died in a freak hat trick accident, so he advocates for the death of all magic. This character might actually be a good addition to show different types of influences on the antagonist, but for the purposes of this activity, they're too like-minded. Plus, his, their affiliation is military, which we are specifically supposed to avoid. Here's a better example. Jeff, Lord Dingdongus' friend from the Royal Academy, now an accomplished wizard. He serves as a foil and shows the antagonist empathy for others. A character like this would naturally cause Lord Dingdongus to think twice about using more violent methods, and the fact they've remained friends despite their differences in opinion on magic shows that he's more than just the big bad wolf. Now it's time to scheme. Develop a well thought out action plan. What does this mean? Well, the point of your antagonist in your story is right in the name, in the etymology. Protagonist, antagonist. They need to oppose each other. So you've got to put them in one another's way. Take what you've learned about your antagonists through these activities. Their goal, their personal connections. Now you have to decide what they're going to do in the story that actually makes them the antagonists. You might have noticed, this probably means your pro and antagonists are going to have contradictory goals. Or maybe they even have the same goal, but they disagree on the method. The key thing here is that they're going to be against each other, organically, because the goals or their methods conflict. No one sets out for the, with the sole purpose of making someone else's life hell. It's all collateral damage. Unless we're talking about a vengeance story, but that's something totally different. So now it's time to pick what your antagonist is actually going to do to get in the protagonist's way. An action plan. What you're going to come up with now is one major action, or the plan, and one minor action, or a step in that plan. There will be more than that when you create the actual story, but for now, just start with one. 
everything else should fall into place once the ball gets rolling. If you've already done a profile and a conflict outline involving your protagonist from my other videos, refer to those as you come up with your antagonist action plan. You'll start to see how everything is a different puzzle piece that all fits together. Grab that notebook. Time for some examples. Here's an example of an action plan and a step. Lord Dingdongus' plan is going to be to conquer other territories as a show of force to magic users. The step he's going to take to achieve this is public execution of people in power. He hopes that this will cause surrender of these territories. Now this directly contradicts Lord Dingdongus' goal, which was to maintain the safety of his people. Starting wars to expand territories is only going to put his people in greater danger. And his method is unnecessarily cruel. This would make Dingdongus an evil lord archetype, and remove any and all intrigue around his character. You know who he is. You don't need to watch what he does after the first couple screw-ups. You might as well give him a magic, all-powerful ring or a world destruction complex. You've already seen this character a hundred times. Here's a better example. Lord Dingdongus' plan is to impose laws that restrict magic to prevent violence peacefully. To do this, he's going to take the action step of sending trusted officers to enforce these laws in magic-using territories. Do you see how this ambiguous action could be seen in a positive or negative light depending on the perspective? For Lord Dingdongus and his close court, this is the most peaceful way to ensure magic-based violence stays low. Aww. Let's say our protagonist, though, is a magic user, feeling oppressed for restrictions on her abilities. Maybe it even affects the livelihood of her family. There's one conflict point already. You can see how conflicting motivations would cause this protagonist and Lord Dingdongus to escalate and eventually clash. No evil deeds needed. This way, if Lord Dingdongus does eventually stray into darker, more drastic means of magical suppression, it seems justified from his perspective. It serves as a wonderful storytelling device as a fall from grace, which is so much better than, he's the bad guy because he wears dark clothes and hates magic. If you complete these three activities with me, you'll be well on your way to crafting a complex and interesting antagonist who propels the story rather than weighing it down with dark, dense monologues. Give them a goal, something to fight for that actually makes sense. While you're at it, throw in a personal connection to make them more sympathetic and flesh out their character. Develop a plan and an action step for how your antagonist is going to try and achieve their goal, and this should be something that directly impedes the protagonist's goal. The important thing to remember here is that every jerk you've ever met was after something of their own. No one sets out just to make someone else's life miserable, and that's exactly how you should think of your antagonist. Because everyone is the main character of their own story, your evil emperor, your antagonist included. So if you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe please to support The Roadside Writer, and check out my other writing help videos. I dare you to watch them all, especially the ones that help you craft an aspect of a story. You could really put together something amazing. And if you're already subscribed to me, make sure you click on that little bell under your video. I just recently learned that means you'll get a notification if I put out a new video. So you won't fall behind on missing any fun writing tips or travel videos. Also, please read my ebook Strand. I'll put a link for it in the description below. Aside from the examples I give you in these videos, it's a great way to see me practice what I preach. Roadside Writer, 